Hello YouTubers, my name is Frederick Lopez, you are in a new episode of Hidden Gems, and today I'm going to be discussing a 1994 film called The Shadow. <laughs> the Shadow stars Alec Baldwin, Penelope Ann Miller, Peter Boyle, Ian McKellen, Tim Curry, John Lone, and is directed by Russell Mulcahy. Alec Baldwin stars as a legendary crime-fighting superhero, The Shadow. Donning his sweeping black cape and disguise, The Shadow takes on his most dangerous nemesis yet, the last descendant of the great Genghis Khan, whose weapon of choice is an atomic bomb. With the fate of humanity hanging in the balance, they square off for a spectacular battle. That is pretty much what The Shadow is about. This is a very different comic book film. Of course, it's based upon the pulp comic hero and radio drama series hero from the 1930s called The Shadow. Orson Welles used to voice him, and this came out in 1994. It was after the first uh, surgence of superhero films. He had 1989 Batman started all, then there's films like Dark Man, The Rocketeer, and there is a new wave of comic book based films, and The Shadow was one of those. Directed by Russell Mukehi, this is actually the first film he did after Highlander 2 failed. Uh, there's a whole story behind that. Yeah, it's from the director of Highlander, a very underrated filmmaker, and this is one of his best films. He also used to do music videos for Duran Duran. And Alec Baldwin does a really great job as the shadow. It's crazy, so you get an origin story. He's a barbarian, and this man named the Toku in Tibet basically... Uh, captures him and trains him. He wants to save him and use his dark soul, his shadow, uh, for good. Let him use his dark shadow within to fight evil elsewhere. And that's where the whole tagline comes in from the shadow of like, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. So he's fighting crime. He comes back to New York as Lamont Cranston. And Penelope Ann Miller does a great job. She was in Carlito's Way and Kindergarten Cop. She plays a love interest. They have a connection. Ian McKellen's her father, very early role, before the X-Men films, and he's basically a scientist who's making an early atomic bomb. Peter Boyle plays uh, Lamont Cranston's kind of cab driver, kind of Alfred figure. Tim Curry's one of the villains. Uh, he's just larger than life and just almost like a comic book character. This is, a very much, this is very much like a comic book movie, but it's better than Dick Tracy as far as the way it's done. It's kind of more in the way of like the 1989 Batman. But you can definitely tell the influence it had on modern films. If you watch Bad Begins or Doctor Strange, there's a lot of elements in those two films that have come from this film. And uh, yeah, you have John Lone, who also was in Rush Hour 2, play Sharon Khan, and he's like the main nemesis. He was taught by the Toku as well. The problem is the Toku wasn't able to turn him to good, like he did Lamont Cranston. So he's a barbarian, and he has to go against the Shadow. They both have the same training. Very interesting villain. It has that 90s cheese. It's very early comic book stuff. This is before like DC had their new movies. This is before Marvel Studios got in the game. Before Marvel even had movies, really. Uh, this was after 1989 Batman, like I said. So you had films like Dark Man, Rocketeer, The Crow, this, Mask. A whole bunch of comic book films being made from other heroes. And uh, a very underrated film. I just love it. And Jerry Goldsmith's score is just fantastic. I just love the theme. He always does great music. I loved his work on the Star Trek films. But this one really is a very memorable score and adds to the film. Russell McKay's direction I love. Uh, I like the mixture of early CGI and practical effects such as like lighting or models and just different things like that. I really like the camera methods used. Sam Raimi originally wanted to direct The Shadow, but he couldn't get the rights to it, so he made Dark Man. But Russell McKay he does a fine job in this. And as a matter of fact, the last fight was actually short and it's supposed to be a bigger fight scene and the Northridge earthquake happened uh, in the west coast in 1994 so that affected the filming so that's why you had that scene with the mirrors but I like the way it shot very music video like you can definitely tell he directed uh, you can definitely tell he directed some Duran Duran music videos and Alec Baldwin there and the whole look it's just great and they combine a lot of different uh, interpretations of the shadow whether it be from the radio TV show, the novels, the pulp comics, they really combine it into this one film. And Bob Kane, uh, the creator of Batman, even cited that the shadow was one major influence on the character and creation of the Batman. So I feel like the shadow is kind of forgotten not only as a hero with all these superhero films but the film The Shadow is a very, very underrated film. I first saw this as a kid, and uh, my brother got it for me at Hollywood Video. 
I had it on VHS, and it's a very underrated movie. It's PG-13, so like the whole family could watch it. And uh, it just has like a timelessness to it. It's almost like Indiana Jones or like the 30s. Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's in so much uh, comedies and serious roles. This is a very underrated role of his, and I just love his voice. He really has one of those unique voices like Morgan Freeman or other actors where he's just like the shadow knows. He's like, you want to look into my eyes? And I just love the stuff with him and Penelope Ann Miller. Uh, I wish she was in more stuff. Uh, I have just the regular Blu-ray, but there's a Shout Factory release that I would highly recommend. But yeah, I consider The Shadow to be among a hidden gem of a film, an underrated film. It's from the 90s, and uh, there's some films from the 90s, but this is one of the better superhero films. There is a lot of bad ones, like Steel or some others, Batman and Robin, but this one was still done in a serious way. It was faithful to the source material. And it made its own thing, ultimately. And uh, David Kep also wrote it. Uh, he did this during his time at Universal. If you don't know who he is, he also wrote the screenplay to Jurassic Park. So there's a lot of uh, brilliant uh, creative people involved behind this. And ultimately, it's just one of those really enjoyable superhero films and a comic book film, especially before they had such a high standard now in the way we know it. So if you definitely like comic books and superhero films, if you want to see something a little bit before the Marvel Studio movies, before Marvel, before like Spider-Man X-Men, before Blade, but maybe around the time of The Crow, after The Rocketeer, Darkman, and Batman 89, then check out The Shadow. It's kind of like that interesting thing in between that just kind of got lost through the annuals of time. And it is such a fantastic movie, enjoyable. I would probably give The Shadow a 3.5 out of 5 and a B+. It's not the best movie ever. It does have some cheesiness. It is a little bit fun. But you know what? It's a comic book movie, and it's kind of supposed to be fun. And Alec Baldwin and all the other actors really do uh, give uh, stellar performances. And they just make the film. I love the, some of the catchphrases of, like, the sun is shining, but the ice is slippery and stuff like that and the way he acts as a shadow. The, the, the toku and the Tibetan knife thing, I love it where he uses his powers. And just the look of it, some elements of the shadow feel like uh, Spawn from the Tom McFarlane comics. And yeah, early CGI use with a little bit of practical effects goes a long way, and I liked when they still use models. The 30s, probably one of my favorite Universal films to show the 1930s, uh, besides uh, Peter Jackson's remake of King Kong. So definitely, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend checking out 1994's The Shadow. It stars Alec Baldwin, one of his most underrated roles in my opinion, and it's a really well-crafted superhero film, and Russell Mulcahy really shows his talent in this. Uh, he had some bad circumstances with Highlander too, but this you could tell is from the director of the original Highlander, and he's a fantastic director, very underrated as well, and this is uh, among one of my favorite uh, films uh, out of his filmography. So yeah. If you haven't seen it, check out The Shadow. Do you know what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The Shadow knows. Stay tuned next month for Hidden Gems in which I will go over the Jim Carrey film, Once Bitten.